Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share something about livelihood, provision, and and success. And and what is success? You know, success in today's world or. I won't say in today's world, but in the world, we have defined success from materialistic world. But success is literally you reaching your goal, or you reaching or attaining achievement, you know, of a certain goal or objective. It could be financial, it could be writing, it could be acting, it could be anything, really anything. As long as you have attained what you wanted to achieve, that is success. But in this in this world today, success has been attributed and attributed in form of a monetary thing, uh, wealth, money. But I want to show you and I want to tell you something that before you chase that kind of success, you are already successful in so many ways that you do not even acknowledge, in so many ways that you do not even know, in so many ways that the world doesn't acknowledge. But you are already. First of all, if you have changed your character from the old, from the dead, to where you are right now, that you're a better man, you're a better woman, whatsoever you're doing, character wise, you're already successful. But I want to speak about success in a biblical perspective or a believer's perspective, you know, what we should consider success. I mean, what, how we should attain it because success, you now these days we see so many gurus, we see so many motivational speakers, so many um, wealthy people that, well, that have, that have made it. I keep telling their success stories and I mean everyone just keeps breaking their neck they're like if so and so started like this well I'm not going to say anything about that that they deceive or do what I'm not gonna go into that I'm not gonna attack any of them but if you say you're a Christian and if you ever want things to go well for you whether you're a Christian or not if you're not a Christian or a believer in Christ, you have to first become a believer. You have to first surrender your life. And I don't have my Bible here. It's on the phone and I'm recording with the phone now. I need to move with my physical Bible. But if you read the first Psalm, you will know what provision, what success, what success is for a Christian. The first psalm tells you that if you walk in the statutes of the Lord, if you avoid the way of the scornful, deceivers, the evil, you will be right. You will be okay. God will take care of you. You will be like that tree that's planted by the riverside. It will always be green. In the times of its fruit, it will always have fruit, and its leaves will never go, they will never dry. They will always be green. And the analogy of the green leaf in the tree, it, it means you will never want. Now here is what we do not realize so many times. If you have meals throughout the day, 
you have somewhere to lay your head. You, 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 you have a bed to keep you warm when it's cold. You should be grateful. It is okay to, to desire more. It is very okay to desire more, more than what we have. But at what cost? Are we gonna chase after these things? Are you going to lose your soul for that nice car, for that good house, for that nice monthly paycheck? This is, this is what I want you to think about. This is what I wanna share, that we already have a lot to our disposal that I will not say that we do not appreciate, but we, we do not see it. It's like there's a veil over our, our faces, over our eyes that we can't see this. In this life, <laughs> this life is very interesting. So many things will, will take you off, off the right course. You'll see cars, you'll see clothes, you'll see money, you'll see houses, you'll see this, you'll see that. you see the people you went to school with growing to a better place. And now today you can see that from within you, the, the, the confines of your home, you know, and you know what's happening in someone else's life through social media. Well, some of it is real, some of it is not, but we should remember one thing. Everyone has a different, uh, a personal walk. Some people, some people come from money. Like they, they already have everything, you know. Some people have to work their way to the top. Some people have come from money and then, you know, they've lost everything and some came from rugs to riches. And some from rugs to riches through the wrong means, you know. So it's so many stories going on in the world, like so many people out there. But, but I want to let you know that the more materialistic you become in this world, the farther away you will drift from the Lord. I'll repeat this. If you have a hot meal, one or two a day, if you can still drink water, if you can wear, if you have clothes, if you can buy a t-shirt, it doesn't matter how much it is, even if it's one dollar. If you have a pair of shoes, if you have a jacket when it's cold, you can wear that. If you have a, a bed, a warm bed, you can sleep when it's cold. Thank God for that. Be grateful. There are so many people that have served God and God has made promises to them. He's told them, hey, I'll make you rich. I'll make you rich. I'll make you wealthy. I'll make you rule nations. I'll make you do this. He means that, but he's only going to do it his own way when you let him. The faster you yield to God and move away from this material world that we look at, he will quicken you. The Holy Spirit will quicken you and you get to that destination. The one thing I know I've, I've learned about God making you a wealthy person one thing I have understood when God provides for you, you do not sit down and waste. I remember my, my, my previous job. It was a miracle how I got that job. <laughs> I can tell you this story and you laugh and you think I'm, I'm lying. But someone else Someone else uh, had a CV. They used my person, my CV to go get a job. And that job was, was to lecture in, in a university.
university, you know. So, but they used my work. When this opening was up, you know, this guy went, and this person had a, a friend in the inside that told him, "Hey, uh, there's some money here. There's, you know, some good money here, and then you." All you have to do is apply. So I had studied with this guy at university. So anyways, what he does, he gets the job. He's my CV, gets the job. So the day they interviewed him, something so strong, something so powerful happened to this guy. He felt so guilty. And he told them the truth. He told them, hey, maybe he saw that teaching wasn't his thing or what something like that maybe i don't know what happened honestly i don't know one thing i know is he calls me and he tells me that hey i used your cv all the works i showed and everything uh they want to see you instead <laughs> they want to see you instead so i go there i remember it was around five it was a friday friday thursday I think it was a Friday. So I go there at the university and yeah. They look at me and the guy asks me Have you ever taught or instructed someone in in, in your field of, of work? I was like no. Maybe a friend or two, you know, just showing them how to, you know, do this or that but nothing academic, right? The guy looks at me and he says, if you can do this kind of work, if you can design these things, if you can animate, if you can make such stuff, there's no way you can tell me that you can't teach someone else to do that. And he told me, he will start working. Well, it was coming to begin, it was actually beginning of the year. It was end of a certain year, then beginning of the new year. So he was like, not this year. That was um, 2018. And he told me, beginning on, on the January of eight, on the 8th of January, you start working. And I'm telling you this story because I want to show you how God really provides. Prior to this, I had hustled, you know, somewhere. I had worked somewhere, then got out of work. I was freelancing, which is kind of tough. It was tough in my field, freelancing, you know, back at home. And again, I met someone somewhere that God used and got me a job for a time. Then after time for that left and then came this one. So when it came to this, in simple terms, what I'm trying to say is I've never applied for a job. Because after university, I tried to apply for work. Everywhere you would go, they'll be like, oh, this is nice. This is nice work. Oh, this is so nice. We'll call you. They never call. Uh, but when I became a Christian, I've never applied for a job someone somehow calls me or I have a conversation with someone and they get me work God's provision so anyways I start working remember the first the first the first day in a lecture room we entered the room and all these you know, students were there young 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 people well I don't, I don't look like my age, so for the most part, when I'm with, when I'm in a young crowd, they, it's easy for me to blend, you know, because they look at me and it's easy to blend. So I was in, I was in within the crowd of the students, and then these guys were like, well, when is the lecturer coming? And then until I got the marker and then went and wrote my name on, on the whiteboard and the whole class laughed. They were like, wow. They were, they were astonished you know so anyways I introduced myself then yeah we went on I remember that evening when I went back home I cried 
and knelt down on my on my knees and cried and prayed to God. I was like, God, you're not you you you're not fair. How could you give me a job and I didn't apply for it, didn't qualify for it or anything? But I thanked him for it. I was like, this was so amazing, you know. I saw how God can create bridges where it is impossible. Never thought I would, could ever lecture in a university, but I did. <laughs> if you go to that university, my name will be there. That's the most interesting thing. And I worked. I really worked for them, you know. And I was there uh, two semesters. Yeah, I was just there one year, you know. And I was asking God, Lord, I know you do not lead people anywhere in vain. Why have you led me to this place? And he told me that I am training you. I'm training you to teach. I'm training you to minister. And then I understood. Well, prior to that I knew I I knew my I knew what God had blessed me to do. But even God needs to train you. So he was training me to teach. So and yeah, he trained me how to teach because you see you see when you teach You just don't lecture. You just don't lecture. You teach. You you develop a relationship with with people, with the people that you teach. I knew each and every one of my students in that class, and I knew their character. I knew I knew the guys that would come on Monday and they still nursing a hangover. I knew the guys that I knew each and every one. I knew the guys who were slow in class, but you just five minutes just sit down with them and phew, they're good to go I, it taught me to understand people and I thank God that my relation with people is so easy I can easily blend in I can easily relate with people I find people that are broken people that have low self-esteem find people that are, are opinionated in so many ways but I don't I don't judge them I understand them because I've learned that understanding is is the greatest is the greatest weapon you can have. But if used wrongly, you you can be a dangerous person. And Satan has it. This is why we need to be in God most all the time, not most of our time, all the time. Because Satan has understanding. He knows the end of sin. He knows the end of something when he starts it. That is a man of understanding. So. I I walked and in there I met students that I ministered to and some of them have some of them have traveled now the world they're in the world some of them have traveled the world but imagine they can they can remember me and think of that but anyways God he blessed me with a job as being paid during that time really good money and the thing is even when I got that money it never did like I can never sit down and tell you that I did this with this money for myself it's like that money always went to people that money always went to people that someone needed this I'll go and give them someone need you know it's like I was working, but I was working for other people. I was learning. I was God was training me, but I, He was paying. I was getting paid, and I was helping other people. And I remember a prayer I made when I just become a Christian. I told the Lord that, please, kill the love for money in me. I used to love money. Just, just the look, just looking at money, right? You know, just right in the pockets, or just feeling that all oh, this, this money in the pockets, this uh, money in my account, that that would make me so, you know. I thank God that He gave me a heart where 
I do not care anymore. I mean, it doesn't matter even if I lose everything and go to to the street. I don't care for that anymore. Now, when I say this, I don't, I don't want to sh show myself that I'm stronger than anyone out there, but it can help you, it can encourage you, it can challenge you. That if there's a human being that's willing to do that for God, then that means we have, we really have to work hard for God, I'm telling you. There's so many people that are serving God in amazing ways that people have abandoned everything in their lives. I'm telling you, these things that we do, <laughs> these things we're doing, seeking money, money is this, money is that. We need money. But money is not everything, I'm telling you, because you do not go with it. We've all seen people with money. We have all seen people with money. And some of these people, at the end of the day, they come out with weird stories about them, you know, like, oh, committed suicide, oh, took drugs, oh, drug overdose, this and that. And like, this person had all the money in the world, but why did they commit suicide? They had success in their career, they had money, they had wealth, they had everything. Why did they? It's the, it's the, the problems that come with the money. Now, if you don't want, I'm not going to go the way of Satanism or anything. I don't know. It's not that I don't want to offend anyone, but I don't want to be that guy. But I'll tell you that every direction you take to get money, to earn a living, whatever you earn will come with its terms and conditions. If you get money in a certain place, it will come with its terms and conditions. But if you get money from God, it will also come with these terms and conditions. But let me tell you something. It will be a beautiful thing. The Lord revealed something to me about money. Something so profound that scared me. In my career, I'm an artist. I'm a digital artist. So you, you can literally do anything. You can do forgery. You can do anything. You can, you can do anything, I'm telling you, in my field. It's so easy to do forgery documents. What, what, what? So easy. I'm telling you, someone can even fabricate a passport. Well, if if I wasn't a Christian, making money would be so easy for me. I'm telling you, I'll fabricate, I'll duplicate passports, I'll do anything, I'll do counterfeit stuff and make lots of money. I'm telling you, even minting money. <laughs> In my country, they got a guy. We got a lady, very respectable lady. If you if you saw her, she was just opposite, a few blocks opposite where we were work, where I was working. But it it was one morning we came and there was a raid, police all over the place, and we're like why was going on? She was minting money. I'm like what what? She looks so responsible, like a like a house you know house wife, <laughs> uh, wife material, hard working, you know independent lady. But she was minting money, man. They got her. But anyways, where I'm getting with this is that the Lord one time told me I wanted to um, I wanted to forge, I wanted to forge, or I wanted to go a certain direction at some point to get a certain document because it was so tough, it required a lot of money and. Well, I could easily do that stuff, you know, I was like, you know what? And the Lord told me, hey, with every opportunity that a man gets, let's say if you got one dollar and that one dollar was stolen, or if it was counterfeit money, if you invest that one dollar and it grows at some point and becomes a billion, in the eyes of God, all that billion was stolen because it, the seed, the seed of it was counterfeit. The seed of it was unclean. So if, let me give you an example. If Mark stole one dollar from, from John, John feels hurt and lost his dollar and Mark goes and invests the one dollar and becomes a billion. 
and Mark asks for forgiveness from John. That one billion belonged to John in the first place. It didn't belong to Mark because the seed was stolen from John. So you are literally stealing. So Mark is literally is literally stealing John's fortune. I don't know if you get that. That we steal. This is how this is how so profound counterfeit theft that we never look at it that when you steal even if it's something small you have st stolen a whole fortune from someone you have taken even if it's one penny like this because that one penny can grow it can grow it can expand it can expand until like what five thousand dollars euros rand one million a billion a it can grow up to that So if you have stolen from someone, you have no idea how much you have stolen, how much you have robbed. That is why God sees that as a grave sin. For us to look at, oh, if you stole a chicken, oh my God, you have no idea. You have stolen a whole generation of chickens. Whole generation. Cause that chicken will lay eggs. The hen to lay eggs. And upon laying eggs, it's gonna have more and more and more and more and more and more. Like let's say a hundred, a thousand chickens will come out of that chicken. That means you have thought you've robbed a thousand chickens from wherever you have stolen it from. This is why God says, stay humble, stay with the little you have, because you know, one by one makes a bundle. But you see, as human beings, we never see all these things. We want quick gain. We want very quick money. Because we want to drive that car someone else is driving on the block. But we don't know how that person got that money. I felt like sh sharing that. And I pray that you are blessed by it. Read the first psalm. If you want to be successful financially in life it's an all-round success in your marriage in at your work that's how God blesses he he, he blesses you he, it's a universal blessing it's not just money or no, no no it's a universal blessing even with health God bless you